Welcome back, everybody, to the Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media. My name is Milan, and next to me is... Pia? Oh, I didn't know we were introducing ourselves (laughs) today. (laughs) Because I I figured we're a little bit more like casual sit-down chatting. Mm. So I figured, you know, I'll introduce myself for once, you know. Okay, nice. All right, I like it. Don't get used to it, okay? (laughs) (laughs) But essentially, these Saturday's episodes will be us just chatting about the most recent racing news. Mm -hmm. It will not cover everything because that's just impossible possible but i think anything that we come across that is interesting to us Mm -hmm. maybe things that we talked about on the channel before and even though this episode will feature probably a good portion of f1 Mm -hmm. this is not going to be solely only about f1 but yeah we'll get into that a little bit later yes agreed and if you guys have any news that come across your screens during the week let us know in the comments or Mm -hmm. Message us on the socials so we can add that to our list. If you want us to review it, talk about it, discuss it, please let us know. We're always on the lookout for some interesting information. But starting right off, Mm -hmm. so one of the things that I saw this week was with the World Rally Championship. They announced a change for 2025. So there was this big uh, World Motorsport Council where the FIA Um, announce some changes to world rally in the future is it kind of like in f1 how they have like regulation changes every every once in a while so is that now was that always like expected to be happening we don't know i don't know for sure i know that they did like a survey also with fans Mm -hmm. uh, to see if they have any feedback for some changes of course they Mm -hmm. also talk to the constructors and the teams and Mm -hmm. stuff and i think this definitely influenced the changes that are coming up Mm -hmm. so it's it's a couple different changes but i think the main thing that's changing is in rally one which i briefly mentioned to you this week i was Mm -hmm. a little bit upset about it is Mm -hmm. that rally one car starting 2025 i believe they're not going to have hybrid engines anymore. Okay. So they're getting rid of the hybrid engines, which I was a little upset about because I'm all for sustainability, especially Mm -hmm. in racing, implementing it. And I mean, we've seen rally. It's crazy fast. So that's not the reason why. So I did a little bit of digging. Yeah, because I think like uh, technically like a hybrid turbo engine uh, could potentially be faster because the battery coming from the electric makes it like because you don't have like an engine where you have to build up the rpms and stuff like that correct and isn't that the same thing with formula one in 2026 we're moving away from the hybrid engines oh so the hybrid area is era is changing Mm. or ending and that's why like everyone is looking forward to 2026 could be i don't i don't i didn't remember that in f1 Mm. if they're getting rid of it because a lot of people did i read through the comments as well for the rally um news and people were also talking about oh f1 they should go back to like some people say the v12 which ooh, the sound ooh. Mm. Uh, yeah it gives me like ooh. you know what i'll link up the video for the f1 for rookies uh-huh. and because uh, there is you can hear the uh v12 sound oh. from a 2002 uh, ferrari i put it in the video because i was like it sounds so good and because it sounds so good i did it twice in the video oh, back to back this yes, yes, yes. <laughs> is like please it's just turn up the volume put a, on your such headphones such a great sound yeah we'll, we'll put it here and you guys can check it out <laughs> um but so the overall idea for them changing it is cost because mm. apparently if the numbers are correct that i read online is that the hybrid engine costs a million dollars for them to create everything around it right Mm -hmm. and then the idea of rally has always been that after the races are over in the um in the what's it called park femme Mm -hmm. or yeah right um they people can buy it it. sounds right to me sorry i don't (laughs) know if it's right it sounds right i don't know maybe because you're convincing i'll I'll, I'll look at the word i know it's something (laughs) along those lines like it sounds like i've I've heard it yeah so i mean they have it um so they, at the end of the rally, you're supposed to be able to buy the car as is mm-hmm. because it is a commercial vehicle. It is c- built so it can drive on the streets, which is a, a thing, of course, in rally. For it's a, that's a requirement, right? It exactly. Because yeah. they have to drive on actual roads to get from the liaison stage to the, the rally stages mm-hmm. and the Parc Femme. It, but I mean, it's also a general requirement f- for the car to be used in rally. It yes. has to be a production. Exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. And mm-hmm. so that's one. It's not the main reason that that's why they want to lower the cost. But if they or once they're going back to like the regular gas engine, mm-hmm. it will cost them only about 400,000. That's huge. So it's a big, that's a lot of big money. difference. So it's definitely the, the power, the performance is going to change a little bit. But they're also they're still going to make sure that there's going to be like... Um, 
gaps or not gaps caps mm -hmm. to the cost cap there's going to mm -hmm. be a personnel cap mm -hmm. there's also going to be like performance caps and mm -hmm. uh, torque caps mm -hmm. and different things to keep uh, rally one rally one mm -hmm. and then rally two rally two so that mm -hmm. there's still a difference because some people are like well let's just get rid of rally one we'll just have rally two mm -hmm. but there is still a horsepower and performance difference between the two categories mm -hmm. so the idea is cost um, but then also hopefully with the lower cost to invite more other manufacturers into yeah, rally sense. again, yeah. like Citroen. A lot of people want them to come back mm -hmm. because they used to be huge in it. I mean, Sebastian mm -hmm. Loeb had won a rally mm -hmm. um, with Citroen and they haven't been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping that more people will come and then also more drivers because the pool is fairly small. Mm -hmm. And apparently that was also one of the reasons why some of the teams uh, went away because there was not enough drivers to fill all the teams that okay, were that'd there. Okay, be, that'd be actually really cool. I, yeah. I'd like that. And I think one of the things they're also doing in Rally is that they're... Um, Maybe if the engine is like completely gas, I mm -hmm. think some of the um, gas that they're using, like the gasoline, mm -hmm. is actually some like more like environmental friendly version. I've know that I don't know if they do that in Rally One, but I've read about that. Oh, okay, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know people have talked about it mm -hmm. in the comments as well that that's maybe something they should yeah. look into to get the the fuel that they use yeah. in either sustainable way or have sustainably. Mm -hmm sustainable fuel i don't know exactly yeah, I don't but know. so i mean so people are mixed mm -hmm. about it now that i hear the reasoning of it i'm like okay i'm not opposed to it they're yeah. also thinking about in um including in the future a rally like e so it's like all electric mm -hmm. which oh, kind of kind of like andros trophy yeah or like we have formula e of course and mm -hmm. then so like have their own kind of mm -hmm. category category for it which i think would be really nice yeah so I'm, I'm okay with the changes. They're also making some changes to the service parks and the, the rally formats as well. Mm -hmm. So that there's some going to be some races that are more sprint rallies. Some mm -hmm. of them that are going to be more endurance rallies. Mm -hmm. So that the rally mileage that they cover over the year is still the same. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a little it's bit a little diversified. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit looser about like um, and then also give more opportunities to other cities and other countries to host rally. Just um because there's going to be less rules or s strict rules for it, which I think is so it's it's going to be interesting to see it implemented. I, I like some of the changes, but yeah, I'm, I'll definitely miss the hybrid. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I have uh, whatever I if it was thinking about saying. I mm -hmm. just forgot. So okay. let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that important. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> let's move on. Um, so the thing that I wanted to bring up is that so we, of course, have MotoGP starting this weekend. So we're both very excited so about excited. that. And they just did like a last minute rule change mm -hmm. that's really big. And I'm a little mad because the video on our channel already came out and I talked about the rule <laughs> changes. <laughs> that and that like, true. like, come on, guys, should have let me know earlier. <laughs> Um, but essentially, this is actually quite big. So there's um, they the riders have to have a certain amount of tire pressure mm -hmm. on, in the cars that is or in the cars on the bikes mm -hmm. um, that is regulated by the tire manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And now they've changed it. So they brought down how much pressure needs to be in the tires. So it's now I think over a certain amount of laps, at least it has to be at least 60 percent. Mm -hmm. And it used to be if it would drop below that. Um, I think last season you would actually get disqualified. Oh, so wow. there have been actually some disqualifications that happened last year. Mm -hmm. And now they changed it that um, it you get a 16 second penalty. Oh, wow. That's so a, I mean, I don't, I've not watched MotoGP yet, but I can imagine that 16 seconds. I mean, it is a, like last, a lot, but the good thing is in MotoGP, unlike like in uh, car racing, mm -hmm. you actually get points all the way until 15th place. Oh, okay. So that means, like, of course, you might drop a lot of positions, mm -hmm. but you might still be able to get points mm -hmm. compared to before where, like, you're, if you're DQ'd, you're DQ'd, right? Oh, okay, gotcha, so, yeah. So, I mean, there's also, like, depending on the sprint race, I think it's now 30, oh, maybe it's 60% of the race you have to meet the correct mm -hmm. tire pressure. And then I think in the sprint, it's 30%. I don't know the exact numbers, okay. but I thought it was very interesting because it is a big change. Mm -hmm. Um, to the sport, uh, especially going from being disqualified to yeah. a 16 second penalty. So that's um, so that was the big news that they released this week. And oh, interesting. Which I thought was also very interesting because it's right 
like the week leading R- like up to right it, yeah. before the race yeah that's interesting yeah. so we'll see if that's going to have any effect on this mm-hmm. weekend's races yeah i'll be curious to see but yeah because we're tuning in for the very first time to moto gp yeah. and i'm very excited about I'm it so excited it's, um yeah i think it, it'll, i think it'll be really cool mm-hmm. i agree i agree um okay so i have two small things that mm-hmm. i wanted to touch on so today when we're filming it is um women's or international women's mm. day yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. right and then I guess there's two little things off of that topic. Uh, happy International Women's oh. Day. <laughs> I was actually thinking about getting you oh, flowers. thank you. But then I was like, no, I got you muffins. Oh, yes. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll take muffins over flowers <laughs> any day. It, because I feel like they would just be in the apartment. So. Yeah, no, no, no. So I feel like you're a muffin girl over flowers. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so the two of the things that I, <laughs> that I wanted to mention off of that, mm-hmm. one is very briefly mm-hmm. um, Formula One, which I just read it before we started this, mm-hmm. is that the RB Cash Up Visa team, however way you say it, mm-hmm. they have a little... Um, mention of it on their car for this weekend oh that's sweet. so they had like happy international women's day and mm-hmm. then they list all the female team members oh that's cool on it which i thought was a really nice okay can i and ask it, without being like trying to be negative mm-hmm. or whatever is it a lot of names though i was surprised actually yes okay cool yeah cool. so i because, mean it's like imagine it's like five no, and, like, no, bro. no no i mean i didn't count it yes but it, it looks like a lot but it would it look at least i would say at least like 20 names okay which surprised me so okay. I, I thought yeah, that's it was good. it was just a nice cool. a nice touch and then also for the main thing that i wanted to say about this was that in formula e mm-hmm. today a female um driver wrote or drove the n- newest gen or mm-hmm. their sh- like test drove it i guess mm-hmm. and then they broke the acceleration record they even accelerated faster than f1 okay which that is really really cool but yeah. i'm also not surprised well yeah so i wanted to just give you the exact numbers yeah absolutely um, um but that's really cool i mean i've never actually driven an electric car but mm-hmm. i hear that most people are very surprised because it just goes from zero to 100 like this yes right there's no delay uh-huh. so i'm i think it's just a matter of time until all formula e cars will go from zero to 100 faster than f1 oh i think it's just a matter of yeah a couple of years so um i want to give a shout out to reem al aboud mm-hmm. she's the one who drove the car Reem or Rima? Reem. Okay. Yes. Okay. Reem Al Aboud. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. She's the one that drove the Gen Beta car. That's the, okay. the name of it. And then so the acceleration from zero to 100 k- kilometers per hour or zero to 60 miles per hour mm-hmm. was 2.49 seconds versus F1 benchmark is 2.6 seconds. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's like that's like Fast and Furious Nitro. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, like there's no, that's crazy. I mean, I would imagine the G-force that you're feeling. I would love to feel it just yeah, once. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, just even if I would be in like a double seater. I need like a neck support though. <laughs> yes. My neck can handle I, it. I, I could not. Yeah, I would have to be like really st- strapped in, like yeah. attached. So yeah, like, like I couldn't Like move. honestly attach like my hammer to the, to the seat uh-huh. so it doesn't bobble around. <laughs> just keep my head up, you know? Yeah, like literally just like... <laughs> meld me into yeah, like a honestly. receipt. <laughs> uh, but that that's cool. That's right? awesome. That's really that awesome. Really I honestly the one thing that I'm really looking forward to with Formula E when they're in a place where they can actually race on the circuits. Mm-hmm. I know that with them being able to do them doing street races also like you have races in like Berlin and stuff yeah. like that, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But it would be awesome to see those cars actually on track. More and more on track. More and more Because they're going onto track. So like Portland is a track. They're on the Monaco track. Yes, that's true. Um, mm-hmm. So there's like they're slowly making their way downtown. Wait, <laughs> Monaco is a street race though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But it's it's. I meant sorry. I meant it was. It's the track that like F1 cars yes, drive on. That's yeah, what yeah. I meant. My apologies. It's, it might actually be a more interesting race because the cars are smaller. Yes. And the whole thing in F1 is that. There, there's no room for overtaking really not not anymore no. no it's just like yeah yeah and then so the other second thing i wanted to bring up briefly mm-hmm. which was because i mean one of the ideas behind what we do of course is because we want to create a community for people but mm-hmm. then also provide people with information about where they can watch mm-hmm. races because there's so much racing out there for people to watch and so, no place to find out where. I mean, really they're so it's bad about so this so tricky i mean it takes us a lot of time to you scrounge up all that information mm-hmm. and figure out where and when you can watch it and things change constantly, yes. which is so I mean, annoying. It, it's why we, or like I came up with this idea for yes. the channel. But uh-huh. but it's also this thing, it's like a lot of these, like I would understand if like, if like 
IMSA or IMSA or whatever the hell doesn't like doesn't advertise with like and the FIA or yes. together but like the FIA has so many different like subcategories mm -hmm. and you guys don't make it i mean now don't because we're doing it yeah okay? we're taking but, care of this now yeah, so you know what actually i'm taking it. back the complaint <laughs> don't worry about it guys don't worry about it keep doing what you're doing um but basically the other thing is so i wanted to point out that roku channel the roku mm -hmm. channel mm -hmm. now has racing america mm -hmm. and wait let me make sure i have the name 100 correct i will say the first thing i think about when you say roku is avatar roku oh <laughs> <laughs> because we just watched the uh the live action <laughs> <laughs> that's true um so it's called racing america it's a, mm -hmm. a channel on the roku channel that's mm -hmm. available it's for free it's 24 7 and they show mostly racing in america that's like cool. their main focus of course is nascar because that's mm -hmm. the american race mm -hmm. um but then they also they show like behind the scenes interviews they show have a couple like shows like podcasty kind of things as well but then they also show like grassroots races oh that's awesome So all like american from the mm -hmm. this country mm -hmm. um but i thought it was really cool that there's a platform i haven't checked it out myself yet because i just read about it mm -hmm. but i thought it was nice that there's a place at least to see some of the racing that is also for free. They have, I think some paid or subscription mm -hmm. things as well, but at least there's a 24 seven channel where people can watch things all about racing. Yeah. I think it's really awesome, especially because the U S has so many tracks, right? Mm -hmm. So give them some love, give them some attention. Yeah. You know, um, we're going to be going to a race in the U S mm -hmm. life in about a month. Oh, time. it's less than a month, right? It's, Is yeah, it? Or, I think yeah, it's right it's in a month, a month from yeah. now. So that's really cool. And um, so, yeah, I think that's awesome. Might as well, right? Exactly. Um, so now, yes. is that, that's yep, the, that right, was, right? That's so all now we're going to move on to F1, yes. right? I mean, so, we could do a whole video just about the news. I'm sure you guys know there's been so many things happening, so, even preseason. So, yes. So... <laughs> The, you know, on our bingo cards, we mm -hmm. didn't put on there that F1 off grid would be more interesting yes. than F1 <laughs> on grid. You know, we failed to mention that and we obviously didn't think about that. Yeah. So, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the whole Horner Red Bull situation. Yes. Obviously, a lot of things that we're going to be talking about are mostly just also speculations because beside yeah. unless you are within red bull mm -hmm. right there's no way to confirm this yes but i think the way all of this really started because i had some time to think about this mm -hmm. at work today or while you know when i had some downtime um <laughs> i was thinking like so this all started off when the founder and mm -hmm. slash um like owner and creator also of red bull the energy drink mm -hmm. but also like he was the one who ended up buying the f1 jaguar team and then rebranding it into mm -hmm. red bull died in 2022 2022 yes. so yeah uh -huh. so he passed away in 2022 mm -hmm. and then so he was i think 50 percent owner of or 49 owner of red bull mm -hmm. and i think so when he passed away i think this whole power struggle started mm -hmm. within red bull mm -hmm. and it's also so mind-boggling to me that a team that is so overtly dominant mm -hmm. at this point like their car is like we've all agreed to that this is a rocket ship at oh, the yeah. moment like there's like they're so fast and um, but they're so messy on the inside i know there's no drama for red bull really on the track nope, everything the tra is happening like behind <laughs> not, the not, scenes not, 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 and not it's in. a lot it is a lot so that that started off i think mm -hmm. that kicked off because i um as far as i read today is that he was actually very involved in mm -hmm. the f1 team he was just not a very pub public figure yes. uh -huh. i think his name was dietrich mietzitz yeah i think so mm -hmm. um And so, yeah, so after he passed away, I, I already had read and heard about like Marco. So Helmut Marco, mm -hmm. who is not a Red Bull employee, but he's like an advisor. Well, he's not a Red Bull F1 team employee. Mm -hmm. He's a Red Bull energy drink employee. Oh, okay. And then the youth team yeah. um, creator or yeah. whatnot. And, and then, I mean, he found, he's the one who like got Verstappen yeah. in there. He was the one who found Danny yeah. and stuff like that. So obviously he has a talent to find talent. Right? Yeah. Oh, so for he, sure. He's, I think he's also like, you could almost say he's maybe the Nicky Lauda equivalent mm. in Red Bull. I mean, it's clear that Max and him have such a close he relationship. A close, yes. Um, before we get into yes. that. Um, so I think that kicked it off. And then I heard that there's obviously like power struggle now between Christian and, and Helmut, mm -hmm. which I 
like I don't know, but then it is it is very interesting. So to get to the point, so like I would say like two or three weeks before the F one season kicked off, mm -hmm. there were allegations made against Christian Horner yes. about in inappropriate uh, conduct with mm -hmm. a female employee. Uh, employee or a female or employee raised that concern yes. or did um, said these things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I I will say <laughs> this sounds really messed up, but this is just really uh, like. It just is just in the time that we live. Mm -hmm. Part of me was incredibly relieved when I found out that it was not sexual harassment. Oh gosh! Yeah. I was like, I was like, come on, like, oh my god. I and mean, then we don't know exactly what the inappropriate just, behavior was. I I heard something about there was like some uh, not YouTube WhatsApp chats. There were messages that were some inappropriate, but we don't know exactly the nature of it. So the only thing that I've heard or read was that it was like not inappropriate in a sense once again not nothing like sexual mm -hmm. it was um controlling behavior mm -hmm. so i don't know if it was like overstepping boundaries in sense like you know she's off of work yes. and like you're still texting and asking and stuff like that mm -hmm. i don't know okay hear that um so that happened like it's also very interesting that this happened like a couple weeks before the uh beginning of the season mm -hmm. and obviously this is when we found out about yes. it right we don't know if this happened maybe at the end of last mm -hmm. season and stuff like that but it is interesting the timing oh for sure and then now of course um there's now talks of max going to leaving um red bull uh -huh. and then his dad joss verstappen even though he is not associated with, with red bull outside of being of course being the Max's dad, dad. <laughs> i don't think he's like employed in any mm -hmm. sense of way um but it's also very interesting that so he's like no i'm gonna take max and go somewhere else yeah. and then i think max now officially said like that's not gonna happen which i'm also glad because like max needs to make his own decisions well yes and no i i think because did you hear about like helmut marco now potentially being suspended yeah he said that which i don't know why well okay so i, I read up on it okay because I, I didn't have time to okay, read that because i read up on that because i was like wait what is happening mm -hmm. so i read up on it and so apparently there is um he's being i guess suspected of maybe leaking information confidential information oh and then so he's being i guess investigated mm. and then so there's going to be a decision whether or not he's going to be suspended so he's having a meeting i think tomorrow uh, so today when the video comes out on mm -hmm. saturday um to figure out what's going to happen so after the race I, I would assume mm -hmm. so, but then he also during the race. I, he, no. <laughs> let's guy, let's get on the Zoom call, guys. Uh. Um, but what he, I wanted to read this mm -hmm. to you, so, um, so I actually thought while you're looking this yeah. up, I thought that people were accusing Joss Verstappen, so Max Verstappen, instead of being the one leaking the information to the, um. Need nether uh, Dutch, sorry, Dutch, yeah. Netherlandish. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't translate it in my brain right now. Add to the Dutch, um media yes, about I, what happened that's what what the accusation were originally because uh -huh. he was done the one immediately saying like i'm gonna take max and i'm gonna go yes to mercedes so or whatever now i guess helmut marco is being suspected for mm -hmm. it and then so he said about when he was asked about being possibly suspended he said i'll put it this way it's difficult to judge or let's put it this way ultimately i'll decide for myself what i do the theoretical possibility always exists. What does that even mean? He I sounds honestly. <laughs> a lot of these people from Red Bull, right? And I'm not trying to be hateful, right? They sound a little bit like villains, right? <laughs> like, who says that? And I think, like, Christian Horner, anytime you see him, like, in, like, the clips that I've seen in, like, DTS, uh -huh. he always sounds, like, a little bit like a Bond villain. Oh I don't God. know if it's the accent. <laughs> and, like, I'm a big Bond fan, so it's kind of funny. Yes. But... <laughs> Like, but what is that? I know. And then so he said that, which is like very ominous. Of course, like, are it you is. are you just going to leave if you're up? I mean, I get it. If it's not a healthy work environment or if you yeah. don't feel happy, he's 80 years old. He doesn't need to do this anymore. I mean, I think he's going to do it until, quote unquote, the end. Yeah. But unless then, he unless there's so much turmoil going on in Red Bull. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, Max was also asked about it because mm -hmm. we know that him and Helmut Marko are like very this. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, Red Bull knows how close I am on my mm -hmm. relationship with ahead with marco so they know interesting because there was also two things about it so total mm -hmm. wolf apparently already said today well we'll have him then i mean who wouldn't no, no, no. have so him he's, he said that about you know, oh, helmut marco? he said that about helmut oh, right because of course he's like well if i can have helmut then guess who's gonna come with that true true three-time yes. world champion <laughs> max verstappen yes. right Ooh. or probably fourth 
by four the end of the times season, by the end yes. of, by the time um i <laughs> that's why this is like this is in, this is more way more interesting than whatever happened in oh my gosh, in, in Bahrain, Bahrain. <laughs> you know <laughs> um but what i do want to say is um so we also then now found out that Max Verstappen has in his contract which his Red Bull contract technically goes until 2028 mm -hmm. that if Helmut is no longer with Red Bull yes. he now he has the option to also leave however that all being said i don't think it would be crazy for Max to leave before 2026 because oh yeah the, like i'm not saying it's guaranteed but, but it's, it's like pretty much guaranteed it, it's like, like unless whoever is going to get the red bull seat next year mm -hmm. will actually be able to give verstappen a run for his money um you know i think it, it, there's it w i would be very surprised if he doesn't win the next two years yes, right I and agree. i think i, I think everyone kind of already agreed mm -hmm. and i know people are not going to like what i'm going to say next but if you think last season was tough for the sport this year's not going to get any any better and next year will be definitely boring because everyone is going to put their money into the 2026 I mean car. everybody's already putting yeah. their money into especially like, the smaller teams Yes, I was just going to say Williams they've talked about it like they've been focusing mm -hmm. for years now literally on 2026 and I hope they're competitive because I don't know if you knew this sorry to interrupt you like okay. this but there are behind Ferrari the constructor with the most amount of constructor championships. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. They That's have amazing. I th so I think Ferrari has 15 or 16 and they have like nine or something like that. But I feel like Williams is <gasps> like, they're also a legacy team. And I, they're I such a legacy and team. And I feel like yes. I, I like, I, I, they have like a special place in my little heart. Uh -huh. Right. But they, they just haven't had a good car for yeah. a long time. And so I really ho wish them the best. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Wouldn't it be awesome if they become all of a sudden, incredibly competitive and then Albon just wins it <gasps> I just would love for Albon to win it but that's a whole other discussion I mean, who knows if he's gonna <laughs> even like this is goes way beyond what yes. we want to talk about here but um <laughs> dreams for 2026 <laughs> let's get the bingo board ready guys <laughs> um but yeah I mean it is very interesting how like Red Bull is like because like jo Joss Verstappen is like oh no if Horner stays the whole team is gonna mm -hmm. fall apart and stuff like that which is wild to me because i think i think he's been the team chef since they've been around since 2005 Warner? yeah i think yeah, so i, mean, I think it's been a I long think, long time before so, Toto, we talked about it the other day yeah, yeah so yeah before Toto, but i mean the big difference is that Toto is part course, owner right yeah. and stuff like that but um i don't know i think it's oh and then yeah the thing that i wanted to bring up that i forgot so now um apparently and Horner hasn't said anything about it because he can't say it, but mm -hmm. apparently that female um, employee mm -hmm. that made the ag allegations has now been suspended. Oh, yeah. It's like all over social media. I was yes. going to say like somebody commented on the RB Visa Cash App thing that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, RB, they honor their female employees while Red Bull just lets them go. <laughs> Which, I mean, she's been su apparently she's been suspended with full pay. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, again, we don't know what's going on. But I will say this, like, this sounds a lot like, I mean, I don't know, like retaliation by the employer. It, it's not a good look from the outside. It's we not a good look, but we don't know the details. Yeah. I um, it's It's really, really hard to judge that without any for sure clear mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i wish helmut marco would have sent us the emails and the whatsapp messages so we would know and could Sh tell you guys. share the love either joss or yes. uh, helmut send it through we'll take a look at it and we'll leave an honest review of what we think about it exactly okay? we'll let you guys um <laughs> our socials are in the <laughs> description box just send it through mate send it through we'll take a look at it exactly. but in all seriousness we will continue to talk about this in the upcoming weeks because sure. it's such a huge thing. And yes. once again, it's probably right now the only in other interesting thing that's happening in F1 is that we have a rookie mm -hmm. racing right now for Ferrari for this one race while oh, science is out. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. Yes. But I think that wraps up all yeah. of our racing news for this week. Mm -hmm. So let us know if you come across something interesting that you want us to look into or talk about. Mm -hmm. Send it our way mm -hmm. and we'll definitely gladly look at it and mm -hmm. see so this is a new thing that we're starting up mm -hmm. now talking about some racing news and yeah so thank you guys for tuning in remember to like and subscribe and as per usual we'll see you guys manana mm. <laughs>